Welcome to the Walk Talks podcast, a resource produced by Southland Christian Ministries located in Ringgold, Louisiana. Our purpose is to provide you with daily devotions so that you can faithfully grow in your relationship with Christ each and every day. We hope these truths will be an encouragement to you as you hear from God's Word today. Hey, this is Mike Herbster. Thanks for joining us on Walk Talks. Hope you're having a great January so far. This is Monday, January 16th, and hard to believe we're already in the third week of January. And this week, I'd like to be discussing with you in the Walk Talks podcast some important Bible characters that teach us great Bible truth for the beginning of this year that'll challenge us all, whether young or old, in how we can better equip ourselves in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Today, we want to talk about the Bible character named Enoch. Enoch is the great, 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 that's four greats, grandson of Adam. He's in the line of Seth and also in the line of Noah. So Enoch was um, actually the great, great, great grandfather of Noah. If you read the genealogy in Genesis chapter 5, we learn some things about Enoch. The Bible says that uh, in, in verse, let's see, sorry, in verse... 21, and Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. We're going to look at another passage in Hebrews um, in just a second as well, because this is reiterated in the book of, in the New Testament as well, but a couple of things I want to note to you that are just interesting to me. One is that Enoch lived 365 years, and that is an interesting thing. Um, I'm not a crazy numbers guy in any way, and I don't think there's any mystic um, information that comes necessarily through numbers, but I don't think it's a far-fetched thing to just say, generally speaking, for 365 days out of the year, we should be walking with God, and the 365 years just reminds us that every day that we live, we should be walking with God. Two times in this short um, little blurb out of the genealogy, we hear that God says about Enoch that he walked with God. Now, this is the Walk Talk podca- podcast, and we know that we're not talking about physical walking here, but physical walking is the most common form of transportation, of course, for mankind. It's an amazing thing. It's a simple thing, but it's a daily thing. And that's true in our spiritual life as well. So when we talk about walking with God, it's getting back to the simple, basic understanding that our relationship with God is the most important thing in our lives. And so when it says that he walked with God, it means that he was wholly devoted to God. His devotion was not in question. His his dedication to God was very, very clear. He was clearly uh, doing what was right. Now, it's interesting to note that Enoch was living... Uh, pre-flood, meaning if you know why God sent the flood, he sent it because of the devastation of sin, the pride, the Tower of Babel, uh, all the different uh, immoral- the immorality that was taking place in, on the earth, and God saw that everything was evil, and that's the time frame where Enoch was living. Now, we are living in a desperate time as well. We see immorality, we see false philosophies, we see worldliness, we see commotion and chaos And sometimes we feel like we're living in the days of Noah. Now, God's not going to destroy the world again with a flood, but God is um, doing his judging work. He will judge sin. And we need Enoch's to stand and walk with God and do the right thing in the midst of the wicked years in which we live as well. Now, I want us to flip over to Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, that great hall of faith, we find a great statement about this man named Enoch. In verse 5 of this great faith chapter, it says, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. And we're going to look at verse 6 in just a second. Now, in in Genesis, it talks about how that he did not die. So when when we see here that he was translated, it means that God took him without him having to die. 
he was in a sense raptured off of the earth. There was only one other man in the Old Testament, you might know uh, the story of Elijah when he was taken up in a fiery chariot. Some have, uh, have kind of guessed, and, and maybe right, rightly so, who knows, but that it, the two witnesses in Revelation could possibly be Enoch and Elijah. There's nothing that says that for sure, but because neither of them died, could it be that those, they would be the two witnesses in, that are men, mentioned in Revelation? But another interesting thought to me is that God might be utilizing in the New Testament Enoch to remind us that one day we will be translated that there will be a time where people who are walking with God on the earth won't die, and that's in what's called the rapture. I hope you're ready for the rapture. Are you ready for the Lord's return? Do you know that you're walking with God? Will you be found waiting for Him and, and uh, working for Him when He comes? It's important for us to, to think about whether we're walking with God in such a way that when we're translated that we would be named before God as an individual who pleased the Lord. In this verse... In chapter 11 of verse 5, it says he was translated because he had a testimony that he pleased God. Now, your testimony is what people see, what they hear, um, how they view you. Now, Jesus needs to be seen in our life so that our testimony can be wrapped up in the name of Jesus Christ, in the works of Jesus Christ, in the words of Jesus Christ, in the love of Jesus Christ. Wow, that is very convicting. We are to be little Christ. That's what the word Christian means. Is your testimony such that you are pleasing God? I mean, do your co-workers know that? Do your uh, schoolmates know that? Do your friends know that? Does your family know that everything is about pleasing God in your life? See, what we find here is that that's what made Enoch unique. He was walking with God in such uh, a special way that pleased God so much that God said, I want him up here with me. Would, wouldn't that be great if God would look down at your life today and see that you're so pleasing God by being obedient to his word and walking with him and fellowship with him that he would want you to be so close to him that he would take you and translate you without even dying. That's what happened to Enoch. Now, what verse 6 does is it brings light to the point. Of, of this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So uh, chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we cannot please God, be acceptable to God without walking by faith. And walking by faith is being obedient in diligently seeking the Lord and being obedient to his purposes and his causes. Enoch pleased the Lord. His testimony was that of walking with God. So as we begin this new year here in the third week of January, I want to challenge you from the life of Enoch that you would be a person that walks with God, characterized by your walk with God, time in his word, fellowship in prayer, obedience to his truth, trusting in his plan and his wisdom for your life, seeking discern, discernment and direction from the word of God, from godly leaders in your life. Are you walking with God? And then would our lives be typified by a testimony that Christ is all over us, that Christ is seen, that we would think, what would Jesus do in every scenario? What, whether that's in our language or in our entertainment, whether in our relationships, that, that our testimony would be that we are pleasing God. What a great challenge to all of our hearts that we would emulate the life of Enoch and be ready to be translated when the rapture takes place. Well, I hope you have a great day today. Thanks for listening to The Walk Talks. Stay with us each day and we hope that it can be a blessing in your life. Thanks for listening to the Walk Talks podcast. We trust that what you've heard today has challenged your walk with God. It is our prayer that through this podcast, every listener would strive to become more like Christ and faithfully live for Him each and every day. Join us next time, and God bless.